Hello and welcome to Ultimate Football History, where we look at the great what-ifs of the beautiful game and attempt to predict what may have happened if football had taken a different course. Like and subscribe to get more Ultimate Football History videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Today we'll be continuing our series looking at what if Yugoslavia didn't break up. This is the third part of the series, so if you want to see how a united Yugoslavia would have done in the 90s, check out the previous videos. Last time we looked at the 98 World Cup, Euro 2000 and the 2002 World Cup, where Yugoslavia reached the semi-final of the 1998 World Cup, following their triumph at Euro 96, before the golden generation began falling apart as they failed to get past the group stage in 2002. Today we're looking at Euro 2004, the 2006 World Cup and Euro 2008. Firstly, Euro 2004. Serbia, Montenegro and Kosovo competed as Serbia and Montenegro and failed to qualify, as did Slovenia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Macedonia, meaning Croatia were the only former Yugoslav representative in Portugal, but they would fail to get past the group stage. Plenty of players broke into the first team for this tournament as many of the old guard retired. Dario Serna, Goran Pandev, Niko Krankjar, Mataja Kesman and Zlatan Ibrahimovic come into the team. Mataja Kesman was one of the most informed strikers in Europe, having scored 78 goals in the previous two seasons at PSV and was set to sign for Chelsea later that summer. In the previous video I explained that for the purpose of this series I've decided to include Zlatan Ibrahimovic in the Yugoslavia squad due to his heritage. The Kovacs brothers, Dejan Stankovic, Avika Dragutinovic, Igor Tudor and Steve Platikosa keep their place from the previous tournament. The team also has Avika Olic and an informed Dada Proso in the squad, so have many attacking options. There is enough talent in this team to get through the group stage, but not any further, with all four semi-finalists, Portugal, the Netherlands, Greece and the Czech Republic, likely to beat Yugoslavia. So quarter-final exit it is. Next up, the 2006 World Cup in Germany. Slovenia, Bosnia and Macedonia again failed to qualify. Croatia would go out in the group stage, as would Serbia and Montenegro in their final tournament under that name. In fact, neither Croatia or Serbia and Montenegro even won a game at the World Cup. As with most Yugoslavian squads so far, there remains a Croatian core. Nemanja Vidic, having joined Manchester United six months earlier, comes into an otherwise unchanged defence. Some changes further up the pitch as Yugoslavia switched to a more modern 4-3-3 formation. Niko Kovac drops to the bench and Mataja Kesman is left out of the squad following a poor couple of years since Euro 2004. Daniel Pranjic comes in on the left wing, whilst a young Luka Modric comes into midfield. Again, there's excellent attacking forwards in the squad, such as Mirko Vucinic, Eduardo and Ivi Karolic. With a team that is still a mix of players before their prime and players that can't quite be described as world class, it would be a similar story as Euro 2004. The team is good enough to get through the group, but again would fail at the second hurdle and go out in the second round. On to Euro 2008. And again, it wasn't a great showing for the former Yugoslav nations. Slovenia, Bosnia, Macedonia and Serbia, which included Kosovo, failed to qualify. And the newly independent Montenegro were yet to enter qualification. Croatia did qualify, but only reached the quarterfinal. This team now begins to look like genuine contenders. Sevilla's Ivan Rakitic, Man City's new sign-in Bedran Korluka and Chelsea's Branislav Ivanovic are excellent additions to the team, while Mirko Vucinic's form at Roma gets them a place ahead of Pranjic. As well as these additions, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Luka Modric, Nemanja Vidic and Dario Serna can fairly be described as world class. It's a deep squad as well. Krankjar remains an option, whilst Milos Krasic, Edin Dzeko and Sami Handenovic give excellent options throughout the squad. Yugoslavia would prove to be one of the best teams in the tournament. Luka Modric would star as he gets a place in the team of the tournament, but they wouldn't quite have enough to get past either Germany or Spain, who are both incredible in this tournament. This would mean Yugoslavia fail at the semi-final stage. 
a great accomplishment given how the last few tournaments have gone, exemplified by their quarter-final win being their first knockout win at a major tournament since 1998. There's a lot of promise in this side. So there's our three tournaments for this part of the series, with a disappointing year seemingly over and a bright future on the horizon. As we're now over halfway, it's probably a good time to take an overall look at the nine tournaments we've discussed so far. Firstly, Euro 92 delivered a semi-final appearance, a feat then equaled two years later at the 94 World Cup. Ultimate glory would come in England at Euro 96, as the Yugoslavia golden generation proved to be the best team in Europe. Another semi-final appearance would follow in 98. Then the golden generation began to age and we reached the missing generation of players who developed during the Yugoslav Wars. A quarter-final elimination in Euro 2000 is followed by a group stage exit in Korea and Japan. Another quarter-final loss at Euro 2004 and a second round loss at the 2006 World Cup mean four consecutive tournaments without a knockout win. Things look to be improving, however, as they finish the third part of our series with an impressive semi-final appearance at Euro 2008. Now, how does that compare against Europe's other top nations? I've compiled their results and looked at how England, France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Portugal and Spain performed in this period. The black squares signify they failed to qualify for the tournament, meaning Germany were the only nation alongside Yugoslavia to appear at all nine tournaments. As you can see, I haven't included Yugoslavia's results in the rest of the performances, so you can still see Germany's success at Euro 96, for example. With three semi-finals and success at Euro 96, Yugoslavia proved to be the best European nation of the 90s, with stars such as Dejan Savicevic, Dragan Stojkovic and Robert Prosinecki. With two finals, Germany would be the next successful, followed by the only other nation to win a major tournament, France. Overall, across the 16 years, France are arguably the most successful with two tournament wins and another final appearance in 2006. They'd be followed by Germany, Italy and then Yugoslavia. Disappointingly, but unsurprisingly, England are the worst of the eight nations in this period. Next time we look at the 2010 World Cup, Euro 2012 and the 2014 World Cup as Yugoslavia look to continue their second wave of talent. As always, thanks for listening and I hope you enjoyed the third part of this series. If so, don't forget to like and subscribe to see more alternate football history videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday to find out what would have happened next with the Yugoslavia national team.